Hello. In this lecture, we are going to talk about two-dimensional kinematics. Till now, we have done problems involving one-dimensional kinematics, meaning motion was either along the x-axis or along the y-axis. In this chapter, we are going to delve deeper into the concept of vectors and how two-dimensional motion takes place in nature. We will solve problems involving situations where motion is both in x direction or horizontal direction and also in the y direction or the vertical direction all right so we have already had some exposure to vectors in uh, previous chapters so i would just like to remind you that all vectors are made up of two components or two parts so we call them either horizontal components or vertical components horizontal components are the components or parts of the vectors that are along the horizontal or x-axis the vertical components likewise is are the parts of the vectors which are along the y-axis or the vertical axis okay so let's look at some examples of how we see vectors first of all we have horizontal vectors horizontal vectors may look like these either going to the right or going to the left so they're directed along the x-axis or the horizontal axis they can either go in the positive direction or the negative direction again implicitly I'm choosing this direction to be positive but you could have chosen this direction to be positive that's completely up to you secondly we have vertical vectors vertical vectors are along the vertical directions so they can either go up or down then the most important thing about two-dimensional kinematics is we get to work with or we have to work with angular vectors so we have to familiarize ourselves with angular vectors very well so angular vectors may look like either a vector like this with an angle theta that the vector forms with the x-axis or they can also form an angle with the y-axis call it phi so whichever one you are given you work with that it doesn't make any difference it's just that you have a different triangle to work with okay we'll see in an example shortly so same goes here so these are the different types of angular vectors now let's work out a component of one of these vectors let's take this vector and work out the parts of the vectors okay whenever you see an angular vector so we are working with the second example there I'm calling the rightward x direction to be positive and the upward y direction to be positive and the vector is directed like so let's call this vector p okay and it makes an angle theta with the x-axis all right it could have similarly made an angle phi with the y-axis in fact whenever you have an angle theta subtended with the x-axis phi is nothing but 90 degrees minus whatever this angle is theta because the full angle is 90 right so that's the gist of it now let's work out the parts of the vectors first of all we have to draw out the different parts of the vector P so since this is the positive X direction and this is the positive Y direction and P is directed like so P we can see is directed along the negative x-axis so it is going like that so as it goes the negative values of x keep increasing so the component or the part of P that is horizontal should be along the negative x-axis okay and since the vector itself is seemingly going upward seemingly increasing in this direction that means 
as you go up you can trace out its y values as well the y values keep increasing as the length of the vector in increases so the y component or the y part of this vector is should be directed in the positive y direction let's draw it out so this is the original vector p this is the angle theta the components then should look like we call this px or the horizontal component of p to that we said this to be py so it makes sense from another intuitive perspective as well if you start walking from here let's call this point o origin and you want to get there either you can go from here to here directly or you can choose to go px the px length in the x direction or negative x direction and py length in the positive y direction so you would reach p okay so the next endeavor is how do we find the magnitudes and direction of px and py we can see that this what we have drawn out including the components of px and py becomes a right angle triangle and we know that hypotenuse of a right angle vector triangle is the magnitude of that vector so this vector was p so the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle denotes the magnitude of p so start off by saying that you know what the magnitude of p is and what theta is remember these can be anything so this is quite general so let's first try and find uh, px and you know this hypotenuse so we will try to locate or we will try to identify the trigonometric relation that relates adjacent of a right angle triangle to its hypotenuse we know its cosine so cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent which is px over hypotenuse which is the magnitude of the given vector this just means px is equal to magnitude of p times cosine theta okay similarly you can use opposite over hypotenuse which is sine to find py py is equal to magnitude of p sine theta now let's investigate the directions of px and py px is going straight up from here which means upward is positive y so the y component has a positive direction now look let's look at the x component it is going straight leftward from this point which means since plus x in the right is in the rightward direction px is in the negative direction so these are the components of my vector okay now let's move on to the main topic of this lecture projectile motion projectile motion is the name given to any motion that takes place under one external force which happens to be gravity and nothing else so object has constant acceleration under gravity because gravity itself accelerates everything under the constant acceleration known as g which has a constant value of 9.8 meters per second squared near the surface of the earth and this acceleration is always directed downwards okay as we know that's how gravity acts and since we are dealing with constant acceleration in projectile motions all of the kinematic equations that we used for one dimensional kinematics applies here as well so which makes our life a lot easier there are three types of projectile motion one vertical 
2 horizontal and 3 angular. Vertical is usually a one dimensional kinematic uh, problem which we have seen in the previous one of the previous lectures. But horizontal and angular become two dimensional motion. How? We will shortly see in the form of examples. But before doing that, let us visualize what a general projectile motion looks like. So, a general projectile motion looks like an object being projected at an angle theta from any surface or any level. We call that level to be our origin of the coordinate system. And since this vector, this velocity is directed at an angle, as we have just learned, this must have been made from two separate parts the x part, the x component and the y component. Since we call the initial velocity vi vector, the x component is denoted by vi x, the y component is vi y. And as the ball goes up, gravity keeps acting on it to pull it downward. So, gravity constantly makes it accelerate and the ball happens to reach a maximum height as we have learned in one dimensional motion before coming back down again. Okay, So, as the uh, ball goes up or as the object goes up, since gravity acts in the downward direction, so gravity makes the object to accelerate downward, but the initial velocity is projected upward. Since velocity is against the direction of acceleration, as you go up, the velocity the overall velocity keeps decreasing and decreasing until at maximum height the velocity is supposedly zero similar to in one dimensional motion. However, in one dimensional motion we have to remember we had only one velocity when things were moving in the vertical direction the y velocity. But here we see that we have two parts to the initial velocity vector the x part and the y part. Let us see how the object moves and reaches a maximum height and how the velocity changes. Since this velocity is at an angle, it is made up of two components as we have known by now. The two components are denoted Vix and Viy. I is just denoting initial. As it goes up, gravity makes it accelerate downward. Since velocity is directed upwards, velocity is moving against gravity and hence the velocity will be decreasing will have a deceleration right so as it goes up the y component of the velocity keeps getting smaller from the initial component so v1y is smaller than viy because gravity is making it accelerate in the opposite direction however there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction because gravity does not act in the horizontal direction. So, we can say that acceleration in the horizontal direction A x is 0 meters per second squared. Okay? Since nothing is making the ball accelerate in the horizontal direction, the initial velocity in the x direction vi x remains the same throughout its motion. This is a very important concept that you need to understand. Since there is no acceleration in the x direction, there is nothing that is causing the initial x component to change. So, this remains same throughout. Okay? However, since there is a y acceleration in the form of gravity, as the ball goes up, the y component keeps going down and down until the uh, object or the ball, whichever I am saying, is has reached a maximum height where only the y component goes to 0, x component is still vix because there is no acceleration in the x direction. And after it has peaked and then it is falling down again, this time gravity acts with the velocity of the ball. Gravity causes the ball to move down from its maximum height. So, as it goes down, the ball or the object accelerates towards ground level again, which means the velocity increases from in the y direction, the y component increases as it goes down. 
okay so more and more it goes down the more and more the y component of velocity increases what happens to the x component it remains the same throughout there is no acceleration in the x direction okay so we can say since the vertical velocity is increasing and uh, increasing downward and uh, the initial velocity the horizontal one horizontal component remains the same then we can say that at the point it hits the ground level or at if just before it hits the ground level the velocity has attained a maximum value so often people may confuse it with saying that when the ball or when an object reaches the ground it has zero velocity no and never in this motion the object has zero velocity it only has zero component of velocity which is the y component at maximum height however the total velocity is never zero because the total velocity also has the x component or x part to it 